What's going on guys, my name is Victor and today I'm going to discuss the five mistakes that people make that immediately scream rookie or amateur. Let me first start off by saying that everyone goes through a learning curve. This is a really hard profession to get into and immediately know what you're doing. It's just not realistic, it's not gonna happen, but we do have YouTube at our disposal if you don't have proper schooling. And that's honestly how I learn most of my stuff is through YouTube, mentorship, and practice. It doesn't happen overnight, but if you really want it and you are dedicated, you can pretty much find out anything you want to online and a lot of times for free. With that being said, we're gonna get into the five things that make me cringe when I see them in a video. All right guys, so before we get into this video and we start picking apart some mistakes that make you look like a rookie, I thought it'd be fun to go back and look at my first video with my friend Jake in the gym. It's just a fitness video, but I already know there's a ton of mistakes in there. It's probably painful and I haven't seen this video in probably two years. And so this is going to be me reacting to this probably one minute flaming hot piece of garbage. So let's get into it. Oh God, <laughs> it's already so grainy. Oh no, so yeah, this is filmed in 60 frames a second. You could tell the difference between the GoPro and my main camera. Oh, nice little whip transition right there. It's so yellow. Oh no. Yeah, I did not export in 24 frames a second. And this is a good example of when um, slow motion is really boring to watch because there's not any speed ramping in here. Yeah, Jake's looking at his watch and so am I. I'm like, when's this freaking video gonna be over? Oh God. That, that wasn't too bad of a shot. But I remember actually editing this video and being really mad that it wasn't in focus. It was really frustrating because that was shot on the Canon T5. Not even the T5i, just the Canon T5. And it was just, ugh, it's a horrible, horrible camera for what I was trying to do because the Canon T5 doesn't film 60 frames a second in full HD, so you're immediately taking a step back. All right, well that was hard to watch, so now let's get into the five mistakes that you might be making that scream, I'm a rookie. All right, the first thing is I can tell you're a rookie if you are not shooting in a flat picture profile. Even if you're not some video guru and you don't do this for a living, you can tell when it's not shot in a flat picture profile because it does not look nearly as good. The colors are often oversaturated and it just is gross. I am guilty of making this mistake too. I had no idea. For some reason I had watched a ton of YouTube and had not seen a video on this. I didn't know this until my mentor, Jacob Owens at the time, told me about this and it was just like, oh, that's why all these LUTs look like crap on my video, that makes sense. It's honestly really scary when you adjust to the flat picture profile because when you're looking at it in your camera, you're like, ugh. <laughs> this is gross. This doesn't look good. Like how, why is this better than having actual color in the video? Because it's just a dull image. Well, that's because in post you go in and you color correct and you color grade. If any movie or TV show was filmed in a standard picture profile, it'd be gross. I guess with the exception of reality TV. I don't know if they shoot an absolutely standard one, but it looks like a standard picture profile. This is why colorists exist, because they stylize videos with color schemes that can completely change the mood based on your color grade. Now, if you're thinking right now, okay, yeah, I'm definitely guilty of this. How do I fix it? I'm gonna get into that right now. So the camera I'm shooting on right now is the Canon 1DX Mark II, and my mentor, Jacob Bowens, told me that I should look into getting CineStyle for that camera and that was something that Technicolor offers for free online and you can just download it straight to the camera. Now for this camera, this is the Canon T7i. Back when I was getting started and someone was putting the flat picture profile on here as a setting, they went online and then Googled 
what's the best flat picture profile for a Canon T7i and boom, there you have it, it's right there. Or you could even YouTube a million different videos that will tell you probably the best one for your camera, but I will get into what mine is. So to change your picture profile, you're going to go into menu and then find wherever it says picture style and then scroll down because you'll have different user settings and you can customize each one of these. And I have this one right here that says neutral. So if you click on that and then go to info detail settings, typically a standard picture profile will be right in the middle all the way down the line. So we lowered the strength all the way, lowered the contrast all the way and the saturation. And then we bumped down the color tone just by one. And now that you've done that, it's saved, it's good, you have it, and you can save your videos from that horrible standard picture profile. Mistake number two, make sure that you're exporting your videos in 24 frames per second in almost all cases. I did not understand this when I was just starting out, and again, this was something that Jacob Owens had told me because I had him review a video and it was the color profile and the 24 frames a second were the first things he pointed out because those are so noticeable. So why should you export in 24 frames per second? Well, most things that we see day to day are 24 frames per second and anything lower than 24 frames a second, your eyes will start to notice that it looks like moving pictures and it'll look kind of choppy. And that's not what we want. Standard films are in 24 frames a second these days. And when I was starting out, I was shooting in 60 frames a second so I could slow-mo the stuff, but I didn't understand that even if you shoot in 60 frames a second, you can export in a different frame rate. And thankfully, my mentor corrected me down the line and now I don't make that mistake, but you see it all the time and it is so painful to watch. I hate seeing it. Now, one of the only types of media in Hollywood that I think doesn't do 24 frames a second is some reality TV shows and maybe even the talk shows. Now, the third thing that people are doing when they're shooting their videos that screams, I'm an amateur, is they're not shooting in manual. You could get away with shooting an auto with some photos and maybe people won't notice, but with video, it's so easy to notice because if I see you walk from outside to inside, like in a vlog or something like that, and the exposure levels change, or it could even be something subtle where you're in a darker part of the house and you, you pan over and it's a brighter side and the exposure levels adjust, I immediately know you're shooting in auto and therefore probably don't know what you're doing. And you know, I, I see that people like Casey Neistat, you know, shoot an auto and sometimes it's just a convenience thing, that's great. But if you're doing like a very serious project and you consider yourself a videographer, I would recommend you just shoot manual. And if you're afraid of that evil M on the dial, you seem to not be able to figure it out, just give it time and give it practice and know your camera and you will eventually start to get it. You'll eventually start to understand it. I went through the same thing. I don't know how many times I looked up the definition of aperture and shutter speed and what is ISO. I didn't get it. And I watched YouTube videos, still didn't get it. And then I had Jacob Owens' video guide. I read that a few times and I slowly started to get it after that. And then the more I practiced and watched, that stuff adjust on my camera, I really started to get what it's doing and how it's altering the image. So if you're struggling, just hang in there. If you are very serious about making this your full-time gig, or even if you're trying to just make something that you're really proud of and looks good and people are gonna think looks good, learn how to shoot manual for your videos. All right, the fourth thing that people are doing that screams I'm an amateur, and this is actually one that I am not guilty of is using gimbals for everything. This one's super painful to watch. I'll see a video of an interview and you've just got, you can tell someone's on a gimbal and they're just kind of like pivoting back and forth on the person. Trust me, it's not replicating the look of a slider if that's what you're thinking. I find it distracting and I immediately want to stop watching a video like that. It's really unfortunate when I get hired for an editing job and that's how the footage looks. Gimbals are a tool just like any other piece of video gear that should be used sparingly, only when you need to, only to accomplish a certain look. In that case, you could either use a slider or a tripod, or even being handheld would look better than a slight back and forth with a gimbal during an interview. It just, it doesn't make sense. So 
Don't be that person who uses the gimbal for everything because they think smooth movement is professional. And honestly, handheld doesn't even get enough credit as is. Now, finally, the fifth one, the fifth mistake that some people make. I haven't done this probably since high school and <laughs> I'm only going to do it now for educational purposes. Please do not do this. Hi, welcome back from that horrible transition. Don't use those corny transitions that are offered in your video editing software. It looks like you're about to deliver a PowerPoint or something. Like It, it does not look good. It immediately takes out the professionalism of it. The only big budget movie that seems to do a wipe is Star Wars. And you know, they were doing that since the 70s, so maybe they just got grandfathered in and that's it. But you're not Star Wars, so I wouldn't even recommend doing a wipe unless it's a transition with something else. You can't go wrong with a regular clean cut or even a fading to black or a cross dissolve, something like that but please don't do those corny transitions. All those things I just mentioned, if you're guilty of doing them, are not to make fun of you, it is to help you learn and grow and become a better videographer. It wasn't long ago that I was making the same mistakes too, and because someone told me, I learned from the mistake and I got better, and that's what it's all about, is just learning from your mistakes and continuing to improve every video. If you made it to the end of this video and liked it, give me a thumbs up, comment what you thought down below, maybe one of the most common mistakes that you see that is a amateur move that I did not put in this video and then go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one.